no one really likes to call healthcare a business, but it is. And um, I, I think fundamentally we have to always keep diversity a part of our framework in our, all our decision making, in our recruitment. It has to be at the forefront of our thinking. And we do want to attract the best. And when they come here, we want our staff to be able to grow their career and to achieve excellence here. People are migrating from all over the world. And it really is incumbent on us to actually take those skills and knowledge and experiences that we have from those individuals and be able to see, can it be applied here? What are some of the great and innovative ideas happening in other parts of the world that we might not even be aware of? And then how can we utilize that to create a more effective and efficient healthcare system? I find that for many organizations, thinking through what you're trying to get out of diversity is something that has not been done to a significant extent. There's plenty of benefits that people may not have looked into or they not be, may not be realistic as to what can and can be achieved and in what, in what time frame. So I think right now when you look at our communities, you see the diversity of the population. Well, this population eventually will come at your door in a hospital as patients. If you want to maintain the patient safety, be a patient-centered focused type of healthcare organization, you want to drive the diversity in the workforce as well. Diversity is, is very important for us because it is all about inclusiveness and acceptance. It is about creating an atmosphere where not only staff and but patients also feel respected, feel valued, and feel that they have the same opportunities as others. A person's diversity can impact the outcome, the experience for the individual as well as for the system in many ways. Evidence-based research demonstrates that patients feel more comfortable when they're at the most vulnerable with someone that is a similar background to them. For example, from a language perspective, if a patient doesn't speak the same language as their healthcare provider, it can impact the visits or repeat visits to the emergency department. It can impact length of stay in the hospital. It can impact uh, post-discharge uh, instructions on self-care. Patients not only come to hospitals because of their clinical needs, they also have non-clinical needs. Maybe it's their faith, maybe it's their religion, maybe it's their lifestyle. Maybe it's food, maybe it's how they perceive palliative care. What is the, the staff or the surgeon or the physician supposed to do, required to do, from a moral, ethical and legal perspective are uh, what he or she needs to know and be aware of. Otherwise, it can be a negative outcome and a negative experience for the individual and for the system. What's important is both sides need to understand what's expected from the other. Somebody born and raised in Canada servicing, you know, immigrant patients, I need to understand what they're expecting. But as an IEHP, I need to understand what Canadian born and raised patients expect because I'm, it's, they're still the majority no matter where I go. And I will have to service them as well. And what's important is to, to, to realize that they will not judge me on my technical knowledge, they will judge me on how well I work with them. So it's on my patient counseling skills if I'm a pharmacist, my bedside manners if I'm a nurse, you know, all a chair side manner if I'm a dentist. I mean, it's like, it will be based on my soft skills fundamentally. If you don't make an effort to make sure that you are uh, truly getting a range of candidates that reflects the diversity of the population you service, and that you evaluate them in, a f in an equitable manner, then you could end up in a situation where it's going to take you a lot longer to, re to catch up to the diversity of the population. In the rural areas, the biggest driver there becomes just having someone to service these patients. We have a wealth of um, opportunity within our uh, diverse um, communities that are coming here. Why not engage in processes that bring them to our rural communities? Uh, it's really important that the healthcare system takes a macro level approach. 
Uh, we know that we are increasingly living in a country in which we have an aging population. We also know that chronic diseases, multiple comorbidities like diabetes, blood pressure, heart disease are increasing in our population um, because of our lifestyle. And so we really need all hands on deck and we need the best and the brightest. And how wonderful is it to actually have IHPs in our midst? You want to hire the best person for the job? wherever they come from and statistically at this point you're going to have a significant number of IEHPs. In creating an environment where we attract internationally educated health professionals, it really gives us another opportunity to leverage the skills that they bring to us. Diversity is an advantage in situations where you're looking long term and creativity is a critical factor of success for the organization. One of the big uh, mechanisms by which diversity brings creative and innovation is bringing these ideas from different countries diff that were created in different languages and which tend to be, because of the language, isolated from one another. The differences in technology, the differences in research that is being done uh, elsewhere is essential to our own growth and opportunity for development. It's beyond a social accountability. It really makes good business sense. And at the end of the day, I think it will uh, increase efficiency in the healthcare system and effectiveness. Uh, for private sector industries, it will lead to, I believe, uh, increased sales and better client experiences. To make that successful, there has to be an integration program in place. When we don't formulate integration well, the society becomes distressed because disparities come up, harassment comes up, people are declined opportunities, and that is because it's not successfully been integrated. So these are imperatives for us. How could we not want to have these uh, new attributes coming to us? They build capacity in our organization. They build greatness in our organization.